Hey, this is Kendall with Crispy, and I'm talking today about sheep hunting and goat hunting. This time of year, and really throughout the year, but this time of year especially, we get calls from guys that want to know what boots should I take on that once in a lifetime hunt, whether you're going to Alaska, Northwest Territories, Yukon, maybe you drew a crazy awesome hunt in, uh, in like Hell's Canyon, Idaho, or up in the Bitterroots in Montana, and you know you're going to be in super gnarly, really technical steep, rugged terrain. Um, so let's break down the five boots that I've selected from our line that, that I personally would consider. Now I've been on a sheep hunt. Uh, I was fortunate enough to, to get kicked out of the 1% club. Uh, I have been on two different goat hunts, one in Alaska, one here in Utah. So I have a little bit of background and I want to share some of my experiences and how I went through my selection. What I, we, the five boots we're going to talk about today is the, the Colorado this is actually the Colorado 2, the Brickstall, which we have in a non-insulated and an insulated, the Brickstall SF, which is the stiffer flex, uh, five flex Brickstall, the new Brickstall Pro, which is a 10 inch Brickstall in a four flex, and the Guide GTX. There's two real th two things that I would, I would keep in mind. Number one, am I going to use this boot for other hunting interests or am I simply going to buy a boot that's going to be specific to steep, rugged terrain that I'm going to hunt either on that sheep hunt or on that goat hunt or that's just my style and that's how I'm hunting. So think about that. The second thing you want to think about is how much how much do I want the boot to do the work for me? And what I mean by that is when you get with a stiffer boot, what you're doing is you're really exchanging work from yourself to the boot and you're asking the boot to do more work or to do some more support. Primarily, we're talking on steep, angled terrain where you're expecting the boot to uh, compensate for some of that natural flex or natural torsion that you might see. Considering those two questions, if you're going to use a boot that's, that's something that you're going to want to use, let's say in multiple hunts, multiple states, plus that sheep hunt or plus that goat hunt, um, then if that's the case, then, then two boots or on the, on the bookends here that I'm going to talk about first. The, the Colorado GTX is, it, we built this boot specifically for guys that wanted a, a lighter weight, more breathable, but, uh, but still a boot that had good ankle support and it also was, was a little bit stiffer. At a four flex on our scale from one to five, the four flex is really, you've got stiffness here, the four aft, plus you've got torsional stiffness that's built into that. This is a very lightweight boot that, that I've personally used across a lot of different terrain. This would be on kind of what I would consider the low end or the, this accept, the acceptable end of, of a sheep or goat hunt. Um, but my, you might find, man, I, meant, I want maybe more leather or I want maybe a little more height. But the, the Colorado GTX will do really well in steep terrain, but it's also going to do well on that moderate kind of approach type terrain. On my sheep hunt in the Alaska range in Alaska, we spent a lot of time really going up valleys uh, on, on kind of mild or what I would consider kind of varied terrain, uh, climbing up hillsides, glassing across canyons. But when it really came down, push came to shove, and we got into like goat, uh, excuse me, sheep terrain, we were going straight up on the like plateaus, straight up again through shale, real rocky, just, just technical terrain. I would have used the, the Colorado and I think it would have been fine for me. I don't really care for a large, a taller boot. So at the eight inch height with the added ankle support, the four flex, I think this boot would have been just fine. And since hunting in Alaska starts on, the sheep hunt start on, on August 10, um, you know, we encountered a little bit of snow. It just skiffed snow up above us. We had kind of rain snow mix. I still think I would have been fine on a pretty athletic hunt in a, in a boot that breathes exceptionally well. So the Colorado GTX, is one that you, you should consider for a sheep or goat or real technical type train. The other one on the opposite end of the spectrum is the Guide GTX. And, and some guys may look at this and say, well, at a three flex, it's not strong enough or beefy enough or, or you know durable enough. In, in this image right here in our backdrop, this is actually the Guide GTX that a, a friend of ours who is a guide used on his, uh, on his uh, doll sheep hunt. The, the guide is, is solid in really every type of terrain. When I was in Alaska two years ago on a, on a mountain goat hunt in the airport, came across a, a fellow from, from Ohio that was using the guide 
He, he couldn't stop talking about how awesome they were on the real rugged train that he hunted in, on Kodiak Island for mountain goats. Sent me some pictures, sent me just some, some kind words about, about the boot. The guide is great because it's got the ABSSS, the ABSS Igabosa support system. With the leather versus some of the fabric, I think you get a little more support in the leather. Plus you get the impenetrable aspect of waterproofness in addition to the gore membrane that's inside. The Vibram sole that we use on, on the guide is different than what, what's on the Brickstall or the Colorado fam, the Brickstall family or on the Colorado. It is a little tackier and maybe a little softer and not quite as sharp edges as you might see on some of the Brickstall soles. But I still think that the guide is worth your consideration. And especially if you're the type of hunter that wants to have one boot that can do most everything, I really feel like the guide GTX is up, up, for the, uh, up for the occasion, headed to Alaska on that once a lifetime sheep hunt. And one boot that I don't have here, the Hunter, at a four flex and a two inches taller than the guide, that really is, should be a consideration. It probably should have been my, if, that was, if this was my starting, starting five lineup, the, the Hunter would be my sixth man for sure for that sheep hunt. Um, so after the guide GTX and the, uh, and the Colorado two GTX, Really, you're looking at the Brickstall family. So going left to right, I've got the Brickstall. The Brickstall, which is the, our standard, this comes in a non-insulated and a, and a 200 gram insulation, insulation. Brown leather, and that's, that's the one way you can pick it out versus the Brickstall SF or the uh, Brickstall Pro. This is the boot that I took on my sheep hunt, and it's also the same boot that I took on my, my mountain goat hunt in, uh, in Alaska two years ago. I chose this boot for a couple of reasons. Number one, I do like the four flex. I don't necessarily care for going up to a five flex. What happens sometimes when you get into a stiffer boot is you start to change the gait or the way you walk or the way that you're stepping. The other thing is, is you're, so you're compensating or changing the way you, you move in the mountains based on the, on the stiffness of the boot. And while a lot of guys really will favor a stiff boot, um, the, whether they know it or not, they're changing their gait somewhat to compensate because the boot stiffness in some boots that are really really stiff you cannot you literally cannot even flex the toe like i'm doing here on this brick stall just know going in if you're looking at boots for that sheep hunt the stiffer you go the more compensation you'll have to make for uh the gait or the way that you move think about if you've if you've been a skier and you've walked around in ski boots or hiked in ski boots there's no way you can actually flex your ankle and your your foot so you're moving a lot from the knee and from the, from the hip versus from the ankle and from the foot. So that's just one consideration that I took into. And I thought, you know what, I, I'm physically fit. I feel strong. I feel like I can do some of the work and then I can ask my boot to do kind of the rest of the work. So I liked the, the brick stall. I took the non-insulated uh, when I went on my goat hunt, but when on my sheep hunt, I took the insulated version, the 200 gram insulation. The one thing I love about the brick stall is this tongue. Uh, highly, highly breathable, uh, crossing glacial streams, you can immediately feel the temperature change because that, you've got that stretch nylon fabric that, uh, in, in both sides. A little bit extra padding. The, the model that I took, which was five, six years ago, um, we didn't have the extra padding and that was the one feedback point we heard from a lot of you hunters out there, as well as from myself and others, that, the in-house that used it, was the, the lacing kind of bit into the, uh, into the foot. As far as break-in period, on this boot that I experienced, it, most of our boots, I've pretty much gone out of the box and start rallying. The Brickstall, I did take some time. I went on probably six or seven micro hikes here in, in Utah where we're based, uh, packing up and down steep terrain. So it took a little while to break that in to where I felt extremely comfortable and ready for, uh, for the Alaska mountains. So the Brickstall in the standard at the four flex is, is, is one that's extremely versatile. And like the, like the Colorado and the guide, you might find the brick stall to be very useful across a lot of different hunts and a lot of different terrain. Uh, a guy named Justin who used to work with us here at Crispy, he and I went on a Colorado, uh, excuse me, on a Wyoming elk hunt. I was wearing the Colorado and he actually wore the brick stall. It's one, something that he had purchased for more like tactical train, but in that on that particular hunt, we had everything. We had sagebrush, we had rolling hills, we had like easy approaches, we had super steep uh, technical timber uh, with with down timber, and and that brick stall is is worth your consideration in the in the four flex because it can do a lot of things, and it it won't be just that boot that's just for the steep terrain. 
breaking over into the Brickstall SF. The Brickstall SF is essentially the same boot as the, as the Brickstall, but in a five flex. Obviously the color change, you can, you can spot this from a mile away, the black with orange. So the five flex is going to be definitely stiff from me. I can feel that here. Um, you're gonna get a little bit of toe flex and that's one difference that you'll find in the crispy versus some of the other brands that might be a wee bit stiffer. We're talking some of these uh, mountaineering type boots is you, even in the five flex, you still have a little bit of toe flex. So you're not, like I was saying before, changing your gait entirely. Still has the added, the ABSS ankle bone support system, 200 gram insulation, uh, the, the stretch nylon through the tongue, again, gonna be very, very breathable. Um, but it's also gonna push away some of that cold that you might find on, on some of those sheep hunts and go hunts where you are right at snow level or you're dipping into the snow. So Brickstall SF is, is my fourth choice. And the fifth choice would be the brand new Brickstall Pro. Uh, this, is, this is what a lot of mountain Alaska hunters have been asking for. A lot of guys out of, out of the Northwest Territories, Yukon, guides that are in the mountains that love the crispy boot, love the way that the fit feels, um, but wanted a boot that was a little bit taller. So the Brickstall Pro is in a four flex, 200 gram insulation. One change from the Brickstall and the Brickstall SF that you'll see in the Brickstall Pro is the lower part of the tongue is not stretched nylon, but it's actually full leather. And part of that was because we recognized that a lot of guys using this in really rough terrain in sheep country and in goat country, um, we're finding as they cross the glacial streams or other, other, you know, steep shale where they're getting a lot of that gravelly shale that's out underneath the little pebbles, we're getting down into the uh, kind of the gusset. And if you don't clean that out, if you're not changing that out, you can see some de deterioration in that area. So ABSS, 10, 10 inch, uh, 10 inch boot, four flex, definitely should be on your radar. If you're, if you're the type of hunter that's going on that sheep hunt, that once a lifetime, and you do favor a 10 inch boot. You want a four flex. Uh, remember the Hunter's a, a 12 inch boot and a four flex, but you want a four flex. And quite frankly, you might find, you know, uh, a lot of opportunity or some opportunity in the lower 48 to, to put the Brickstall Pro uh, in a service. So this is my, uh, my starting lineup. If I'm considering a sheep hunt or a goat hunt or that once a lifetime, super rugged country hunt, and I want a boot that's gonna do more work uh, for me on the, on, on the ground, and maybe a little bit less work that I'm required to put into the boot, and I wanna be stable on, on super steep technical terrain. Uh, if you have any questions about these particular boots or, or wanna get it into kind of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, man, give us a call. We'd love to chat through helping you get into the right crispy for that once-in-a-lifetime opportunity.